Hearts represent all my all the people say We people celebrating all from my homeland Like my old man say there's nothing impossible So we have to bring this message to my brother Lyrical Straight from the crew out to the blue We represent the voices of my ancestors Previously on Delos Yosha and I ran dry of cruising money and were lucky enough to be hired to help deliver a super yacht from Borneo to Auckland. After some time on dry land, the stars had aligned and we were offered a team position to join another yacht heading through the South Pacific over the space of six months. This is the story of our voyage, working alongside three other amazing sailors in some of the most beautiful places in the world. got into, into Fiji and it was like a four day trip or something like that. This boat, it's a sloop and it's, they race all over the world so it's fast. I think our average speed for that whole, that trip to, to Fiji was like 11 and a half knots or something like that. So we were flying the whole time. Once we got to Fiji, we had about a week or two before the owners arrived. Then it was work. We had jobs, right? I had to clean the boat, get the boat ready. Yosha had to get the interior ready. The owners were coming, you know, these people we hadn't met before were coming to, to their floating home and we were their crew. You know, I went out and got picked some flowers and like put them in little vases in their, in their cabins and just pretty much made the boat look really pretty on the inside, which I actually really, really enjoyed. It was pretty interesting, like, I was very nervous, but then when they showed up, it all kind of went away. I've done a lot of hospitality before and worked as, like, bellman and valet and all that kind of stuff, so right away they come up and, you know, I get the bags out of the car for them and put them in a little dock cart and introduce myself and shake their hands, and Yoshi does the same thing. And then we, yeah, we walk down and they were walking up to the boat, and, you know, I'd spent two days, like, polishing the hole and working my ass off to make the boat look shiny, and I'm walking with the owners with their bags. And, and just thinking, oh, are they going to see any water spots or are they those type of people that would care about something like that? I just had no idea, you know, or what the, what the expectations were. Once they arrived in Fiji, they stayed for uh, about three weeks and we went cruising uh, up the Asawas, which is a chain of islands uh, northwest of mainland Fiji. Cruising around Fiji was cool. It was a lot of fun. We, I mean, we went to a lot of the same places that, that Delos went to and it was cool because Yosh and I kind of had input on that as well. Like, oh yeah, we've been there, we can go there and we can see this and we can do that or yeah, there's manta rays here that we've seen before. And... My, I, I got pretty lucky. My job was pretty chill. It was, it was just like we do on Delos. And it was really, really fun. I mean, my typical day would be, we'd be at a nice anchorage and I'd wake up at seven or eight, come out and kind of make sure the exterior of the boat is clean and nice and lower the back uh, platform for them, get out the snorkel gear or paddle boards, whatever I think they would want to do that day. Then basically you just kind of wait for them to get up and you can go swimming or I would go for a long paddleboard in the mornings and come back and then when they woke up and, and had their breakfast they uh, they kind of needed a push so you'd say oh you know there's a sweet diving spot right over here that I found if you guys want to go check it out let me know or you know you can kayak over here up this river or whatever it was it was kind of like I would go and do it first and then come back and kind of let them know what was up and then you'd come back after a dive and chef had prepared your lunch for you and like it's all air conditioned and nice and then that was that's pretty much it I mean I kept the boat clean and that was fairly easy there's two of us out there kind of making sure the boat looked nice but they weren't very strict about that it wasn't like they were like oh the boat's dirty today or anything we just kind of make it made it look good and so yeah my job was very very chill while Yasha was inside doing like 
12 hours of laundry and ironing every day. It wasn't that bad. You know, we would get up at seven and I would serve them their breakfast, which was just a smoothie, so that was really chill. They would go diving or go snorkeling or just hang out. I would redo, you know, make their bed, do their laundry, help the chef with lunch, set the table up for lunch, serve them lunch, hang out for the afternoon, maybe go for a swim, and then set the table up for more of a formal dinner. So it was really fun, I actually enjoyed that. I got to like fold little napkins and cool little designs and make pretty little centerpieces and set the table up really pretty. So that was kind of the highlight of my day because you could be really creative. We would all sit down and have dinner together and drink some wine and relax and chat and tell stories and talk about the day. And then we would go to bed and kind of do it again. Yeah, we never really stayed at an anchorage for, for too long. It seemed like we, we would always move a lot. The captain liked to sail and that's, that's what he loved to do. He loved moving the boat. So we'd stay at a place for two days or so and then we'd get up early, sail to the next place. And those, I guess, were the hard days because you'd get up early and you'd have to, all of us would have to sail the boat. Two people on either, either sheets of the jib and one person on the main sheet, one person steering and one person kind of keeping a lookout. So. Yeah, those days were kind of full on because we'd have to take the boat from A to B plus do our everyday tasks. But it felt very kind of rewarding in a way and very purposeful because at the end of every month we would get a good chunk of money into our bank account and that felt really good, you know, it felt there was purpose to it and to make these people's lives on their, on their boat very enjoyable and that was a nice sort of service. I really kind of enjoyed that part of it. really started getting used to the boat after a while. Hand steering was really cool and the, the helms are kind of set way out back in the open so you're just out there looking at everything and really got a lot of good experience, learned a lot from the crew on board. They've all been sailing for like 30 years and they're all racers. They've all been part of like big, big racing boats all over the world so the way they ran the boat was a lot different than I would say other super yachts where they kind of typically with motor other places, we sailed everywhere. So the really awesome thing was when we were cruising around, we would do all the same things that we had done on Delos before, so we would go into these villages that we knew about and we would have to go talk to the chief and do the Sivu Sivu with the Kava. And, you know, we were able to go in and do those sorts of things and have these cultural experiences as well. And as long as the jobs were done that needed to be done, there was no stress or anything, so there was just a, a nice, relaxed, atmosphere and very loving and the rest of the crew were really awesome and everybody just got along really great. I think my favorite experience though from Fuji was was we got to do a shark dive. We went down like 100 to 120 feet and they have this cage and they just open it up and there's all these fish inside, all these dead fish and they start throwing them in the air and then these lemon sharks and bull sharks just come out of nowhere and start taking all this fish heads and all these fish bodies. Everybody was holding on to like this one line that you weren't supposed to cross and all it is is like a piece of rope and then 
you know, everybody's holding on to it, and then in front of that rope are the are the dive guides that are feeding the sharks. And one of these sharks came in behind the guys that were feeding them, and like right next to us between the rope and the guys that are feeding them, which they're not, I guess the sharks aren't supposed to do that, they're supposed to keep them out, but came through, and I could have reached out and like touched this massive bull shark. Pretty cool. The owners were on board in Fiji for about three weeks, and um, then we went back to Port Denarau and they, they flew off back home, and we were headed to Vanuatu. We've been there in Delos, and it was our favorite place to visit, so we were going back. And the sail to Vanuatu was epic, like we were used to the boat by then. The conditions were perfect, it was a really nice 10 to 15 knot breeze, beam reach. We were just cruising along, steering, you know, at 2 o'clock in the morning by myself. And I just, I felt really proud of myself to be able to do that at the age of 21. Be steering this massive multi-million dollar boat, cruising to Vanuatu. And I was just like, life is awesome. <laughs> So once we picked up the owners in Port Villa in Vanuatu, um, we did a bit of a cruise up to Luganville in Espirito Santo, which is like the northern part of Vanuatu. Brady had kind of managed to talk them into doing a few dives on the Coolidge, which was super awesome because last time we were there, I wasn't able to dive on the Coolidge because you can only go with a dive company and I wasn't certified at the time. It was sunk back in World War II. It was, it used to be a luxury cruise liner and it was converted into a troop carrier. It hit a friendly mine as, as it was entering the harbour and the captain drove it up onto the reef in hopes to save it. Then it slid down the reef and it's now the most accessible wreck dive in the world. Brady even managed to talk them into doing a night dive, which is pretty scary. I mean, it's pretty hardcore to do a night dive on the Coolidge. The dive guide sort of flashes his torch over his hand to kind of indicate to everybody to turn their torches off. So then it just goes completely, like, completely dark, pitch black, and you're just, all you can hear is like, the bubbles breathing underwater, and you're just kind of like, <gasps> your heart's beating real fast and stuff. And then all of a sudden these flash, these little flashlight fish, just come out of nowhere and just start like lighting up everywhere around you and it on honestly feels like you're in the middle of space it's just it was just the coolest coolest feeling uh, once the owners flew back um, we had about a couple of weeks just hanging out in Vanuatu before we had to sail to New Caledonia to meet up with them again I remember one day we were sitting in the salon, we were all hanging out, having a cup of tea or something, and we started reading the, um, the Delos blogs from when we had cruised down to Tana. We just all got really excited, and we were like, and the captain started looking at the weather and the charts, and we were like, we found out that there was this perfect weather window to just go south. So it was just the crew of the boat, and we sailed all the way from Port Villa down to Tana. Should be in tonight sometime and have a few days to explore the volcano again and see the John from Colt, the guys we met a couple years ago as well that are pretty nutty. The volcano was just as powerful and just as active and 
just as memorable as it was three years before. Um, but we did it right this time. We bought up a cooler of beer and, and some wine. So we, we sat up there for the sunset and just watched these explosions go off one after the other. And, but we weren't naked this time. That would be very unprofessional. <laughs> days before we were headed off to New Caledonia so we hiked over to see the John Frum cult. So we're just on our way to the John Frum village. We've got some pictures that we're gonna give them that we took when we were here three years ago and some clothes and some goodies and things so Sackers, we had to protect, them. and then we bury them in the ground, and then we plant them again. This is very useful. Otherwise, if you want to have plenty cover, and then you have to dig one, and then you can make seven to eight cover again from one of these. Yeah. So it's very useful. Otherwise, if you throw them and then you ha don't have cover anymore, that's right. So the more you drink, the more plants you have. That's right. <laughs> We would. <laughs> you drink glass. <laughs> Otherwise, you can use them, the biggest one, for special occasion like a custom ceremony, custom second season. And it was really cool. I got some pictures that we took of them last time and printed them out and laminated them and then hiked over and, and searched for uh, Chief Isaac Wan and Prophet Fred. We've made it to Sulphur Bay. <laughs> I was able to find Chief Isaac and like give him this picture and he remembered us and I gave him this ridiculous picture of like me with a headband looking all weird, like our cheeks touching and he loved it. Hi, good to see you. Have a photo. Oh, me remember. Yeah. Yeah, you, you remember? remember. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I gave him a picture of of Brian and the whole crew from Sulphur Bay standing in front of the headquarters, the cult headquarters that weren't built at the time the picture was taken. And then it was time to head southwest to New Caledonia. We had easterlies the whole way, so it was just on the beam. And I was pretty excited to see New Caledonia because I, I mean, we'd been to French Polynesia, which was kind of what I expected New Cal to be like. And it was. It was, it was really expensive and very, very French. So there was lots of little bakeries and patisseries and baguettes and croissants and delicious savory goodness. Yeah, we basically just sat at the dock and waited for the owners to arrive. And we did about a week of cruising down in like the southern lagoon of New Caledonia, which was really beautiful.
and that was it. We went back to Nemea and checked out. And then when the owners left, it was a bit sad. You know, it was the last, the last trip of the season and then we waited for a good weather window out of New Caledonia back to Auckland. New Caledonia. <laughs> we were headed for Auckland. <laughs> it was an awesome sail. It was the best sail we had on, on the boat. As we were cruising south, we were about a hundred miles south of the most southern point of New Caledonia and there's this massive bank um, where it goes from like two, three thousand meters deep of water up to like 50 and it's like two miles across in, in all directions. There's this massive, massive kind of underwater mountain. So as we were cruising through it, all of a sudden we could just see these like spurts of, of water like coming up on the horizon and like as we got closer and closer, like we realized it was all these whales breaching out of the water. sort of passed through the middle of this high so there was a while there where we had light winds and kind of variable well, I can see everything's piecing together it's gonna be fine so fine so But once we got over the high and closer to New Zealand, we got some really good winds and sort of doing a really close reach down into Auckland. And, and then as we got closer to Apua, of course the weather got shit, it was blowing 30-35. But it was cool because we all were very comfortable in the boat and we were all really good as crew at that point. So, powered through it. And I just felt like 
just this awesome feeling, you know, of just driving this boat, we were coming back home and we'd finish this, this season and, you know, it was kind of this feeling of like, yeah, we did it, you know. So yeah, the two the two super yachts that we worked on, it was really cool. Learned a lot, got to see kind of the other side, and it was definitely worth it. I wouldn't I wouldn't change any of it for the world. I'd definitely rather be sailing on Delos at the end of the day. I mean, super yachts are fun and you make money, but you're sailing for somebody else. You're always doing something for somebody else, and you get used to the AC and you get used to the long showers and you get used to. Well, you never get used to a chef cooking for you. You never get used to that. But the other things, they just kind of blend away, just as if normal things blend away in normal life. And the cool thing about Delos is you're able to appreciate things like that when you have them. We're out, bitches. Yosh and I had finally saved enough money to buy some tickets to the States for a long overdue visit to see my family and my amigos. But stay tuned, because up next, Brian and Karen and some other salty sea dogs returned to Dallas and managed to do zero to cruising in four days. And after the States, Brady and I have a stop in New Zealand to see my family before coming back home to Dallas to sail across the Indian Ocean. amazing night dive again. It was a really cool experience. I feel like everything I'm saying is a really cool experience. <laughs> and we had a great weather window for heading south and we headed, start heading to <laughs> Anne. It, it was our six month kind of working thing and we had big, oh gosh. <laughs> so we're really excited once well, we got sum, the... sum that shit up. I'm summing that shit up. Sum that shit up. Pop up. <laughs> How great? Really super great. It was a really awesome experience. It was a really awesome experience. We learned a lot. I mean, I learned a lot. Colini out. <laughs>
We people celebrating all from my homeland. Like my old man say, there's nothing impossible. So we have to bring this message to my brother Lyrica. That stuff, so right away they come up and you know I get the bags out of the car for them and put them in a little dock cart and introduce myself and shake their hands and Yoshi does the same thing and then we yeah we walk down and they were walking up to the boat and you know I'd spent two days like polishing the hole and working my ass off to make the boat look shiny and I'm walking with the owners with their bags and just thinking oh are they gonna see any water spots or are they those type of people that would care about something like that I just had no idea you know or what the what the expectations were once they arrived in Fiji, they stayed for uh, about three weeks and we went cruising uh, up the Asawas, which is a chain of islands to Fiji. We had about a week or two before the owners arrived. Then it was work. We had jobs, right? I had to clean the boat, get the boat ready. Yosha had to get the interior ready. The owners were coming, you know, these people we hadn't met before were coming to, to their floating home and we were their crew. You know, I went out and got picked some flowers and like put them in little vases in their, in their cabins and just pretty much made the boat look really pretty on the inside, which I actually really, really enjoyed. It was pretty interesting, like I was very nervous, but then when they showed up, it all kind of went away. I've done a lot of hospitality before and worked as like Bellman and valet and all that.